So uh, generally, this is uh, a paper about the uh, a presentation about the stands and the results of their employment. So the authors are Professor Ligo Zhao and Dr. Ran here from Loughborough University. And I was also, so I'm still part of this collaboration. So I try to do my best to make this presentation. So can we go to the second slide? So generally, you can see here an outline. Uh, the paper will cover finite element methods, models, constitutive models, deployment of metallic stands. Then there will be a comparison between metallic and polymeric stands. Uh, it also will cover tissue damage and instant restenosis. And I'll explain you later on what this means for those who don't know. And then there will be an example of the potential uh, patient-specific modeling uh, just, which is related to the stents overlaps, followed by some conclusions. Next slide. So this slide demonstrates to you the importance uh, and a grim reality of the cardiovascular diseases using the examples from England and Wales. And you can see here generally that the largest amount of the uh, cardiovascular circulatory diseases. Uh, sorry, the presentation, somebody, people can see the presentation. You can go to the bottom of the uh, meeting details, people, and there is, so just uh, uh, second from the top, uh, from the bottom is the presentation. You can click on it, and then you will see it on the screen. So, okay. Are this so? Just Shisha, can you see the presentation? Okay, so just here. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Fine. We'll continue. So generally, uh, as you can see, thirty-two percent of the death are caused by cardiovascular diseases. A large number, as you can imagine, and so just uh, this is one of the very important reasons for the losses in the, so just not only of the lives, but also for the uh, economic effect, uh, because people cannot work uh, during the process of, uh, uh, of healing, and so just clearly a significant uh, surgical interventions uh, in order to heal this process. Next slide. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, this is the generally the world map, but with a with an interesting presentation. You can see that instead of the names of the countries which you can uh, know which you know clearly, you can see now here that the main cause of, uh, of sicknesses is being presented. So, and here just on the top, heart diseases in pink, and you can see that they occupy most parts of uh, many continents, apparently only in Africa, so Southern Africa and sub cycle area, they are different in this case so but in many developed countries heart disease is the main problem of the healthcare sector next slide so uh, uh, some definitions uh, if you don't know what it is uh, we will start speaking about atherosclerosis generally if you are young and healthy and exercise then your arteries are in a good shape and there is no problem for the blood to flow through them. Clearly, depending on the exercise, so just if people are obese, if so just with the age and other uh, conditions, there is an accumulation of so-called plaque. This is the yellowish type of the so just uh, uh, of the substance shown inside the artery. As a result, so this is a fatty tissue, uh, fat-like uh, tissue, and uh, 
if it is if it accumulates then it closes the internal diameter of the artery which can significantly impede the blood flow through the artery as a result in a very severe case it can fully close then preventing parts of the artery to supply the blood to the to the tissues organs and parts of the body next slide So the ways how to deal with this is so just uh, as engineers, clearly, if we have something which prevents the blood flow, we should try to remove it and to free up the space for this. This can be done with two major types of operations, which are called angioplasty and stenting. Angioplasty, uh, it is... Uh, the way when a special catheter, it's a flexible tube with a balloon, are being put inside of the artery. Then they are being, then they are being so just uh, blown up. In this way, uh, when the pressure is is being provided, they are spreading the plug inside the artery. So, and stenting, if we can put on part, uh, so just on the end of, of this balloon, we can put and stand, then we can use the stent inside the artery. Then, so just removing the internal pressure of the balloon, we can leave fully employed stent. Clearly, we should overcome the elastic range of the deformation so that there is a residual deformation of the stand inside the artery and then we can remove the balloon uh, the the balloon out of the artery so and generally this is the idea about the stenting operation a large number of operations is being done every year and clearly it's became a routine operation and many people have this type of surgery uh, intervention, but it is not, everything is absolutely uh, so just uh, established in this area. There are still some challenges, bottlenecks, and they will be covered in this presentation. Next slide. So you can see here that, so just on the one hand, we do have the benefits, which I've mostly uh, mentioned. And the idea clearly, if we have put something inside and opened up the artery, then the flow simply continues to go. And this is practically immediately remove all the problems which were before this. So that's why it's a very beneficial type of the operation. But there are still the challenges which I've already mentioned. One of them, so they can be a thrombosis. So the same, so just some clots also just uh, so can be formed inside the artery. And if they're being separated from the wall, so they can go into the stream and block arteries in other places. Then another important part is that, uh, so just clearly the arteries, they don't like interaction with their walls. So as you can imagine, so just if you put something metallic or plastic inside your body, it wouldn't be so just such a great feeling. So that's why as a response of the artery, there can be a case which is called restenosis. We will deal with this later on, but here for you to understand, it's simply the additional growth of some parts of the arterial layers, which are generally starting occupying part of the lumen or the internal part of the artery. And surprisingly, the stands, though they are being metallic mostly because the polymerics suggest they are only in developments, uh, suggest uh, though some are, are being used for different application. In cardiovascular cases, the metallic stands they being significantly stronger apparently than the soft tissues of arteries, they still fail quite a lot, and there is a problem there 
which the need to either introduce a new stand, clearly removing the failed stand is a very important, uh, is a nearly impossible operation. Uh, so there, there are some problems which surgeons are facing in their practice of using these devices. Next slide. So uh, speaking about different types of the stands, so uh, clearly what, what can be changed here, they can be different shapes, and we will deal with them later on. And uh, so just, there are the major elements of the geometries which can be changed. Materials, there are not that many different materials, because as discussed in the morning today, uh, materials used inside our body should be biocompatible and bioneutral. They shouldn't be toxic. And not many metals and alloys, they meet this requirement. Still, so just there are some options. We do have the, the stainless steel can be used for this. The cobalt chromium alloys are used, shape memory alloys like nitinol. And then there are also polymeric materials they can be de de biodegradable, so just uh, and uh, uh, generally the idea is to for them to be removed from the artery with time, so that artery can continue performing uh, its function without any support. And they can be also coated polymers in order to add some medicine in in the layer of these stands. And uh, in terms of delivery systems. So they can be folded or unfolded so with the balloons. Uh, so clearly using the nitinol, which is known for its shape memory effect. So then we can have uh, super elasticity. We can have self-expandable stands. And uh, so just there are different types of their manufacturing. Let's go to the next slide. So uh, here is the finite element model, which is one of the many uh, which uh, RAN has developed. And you can see here the major elements uh, presented already in terms of the finite element simulations. Clearly, it reflects the reality of this. So you can see uh, inside the artery, the blue material is a balloon, on top of which we do have a stand. So here it is a specific stance, which is called Zion's stand, which have this specific pattern shown in yellow. And then we do have here the major parts of the, of the system that we are trying to deal with. There is a stenotic plaque. This is the plaque which occupies part of the lumen in the artery. And then we have three layers which form the wall of the artery, intima, media, and adventitia. And here you, you see all the parameters of the models that are being used here. So that's why it's relatively, as you can see, the scale is relatively small. Next slide. So, uh, as you can imagine, uh, all the materials, even including uh, uh, metals and alloys, because they're being used beyond the elastic limit, only the complex material behavior can be used. And you can see here, for three different metals, you can see here the respective stress-strain st st stress curves. On the other hand, biomaterials which are forming the artery wall and the plaque, they have a typical, so just for, bio, for soft biological tissues behavior, which can be described with a hyper elastic models. The most uh, famous is one by Ogden. And you can see here the behavior of this layers presented in the right hand part of the slide so these models they are incorporated into the finite element software 
Next slide. And as you can imagine, so the best way to model the situation would be as it is presented here in, in our analysis is to have the full cycle of the application to be used here. So you see that the balloon is being expanded. It expands also the stand. The stand starts interacting with the plaque. The plaque is attached to the walls of the artery. So, and you see the entire process here. Next slide. So as promised, now you can see here different types of stands that are being used in the uh, in the industry. So the logic behind this type of designs, it is not a science as we have understood. It's so just it's probably mostly based. It's more of an art considering uh, the needed kinematics of the process. Clearly, we must significantly expand the stand in the radial direction. And so you can see here quite a few U-bands in uh, just at least in the last three designs so that it would allow the structure to open. And you can see that we have here few generations and so the simplest one, the first generation, have a so just a repetitive, relatively simple pattern. But going to the second and third generation, the patterns were becoming more and and more complicated. Next slide. Uh, hello. hello. Oh. Okay, Ron is back. Uh, I'm using my phone, but uh, it seems that. Uh... It has a lot of echo. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, Ron, all the mics are being switched by the participants. So if there is an echo, it is somewhere in your system. Uh, I'm using my phone, so... I don't know. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Try. Uh, can you uh, uh, can you then uh, mute your mic? The microphone is suggested here. Your microphone uh, on your computer. and speakers as well. So this is advice from the audience. Try now. Hello. 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 Still, we have quite a lot of echo. Have you muted your computer, computer's mic, as well as the external speakers? Yeah, please, your speaker. Try once more. Uh, I can't hear you, Ron. OK, fine. So we'll go back to my presentation, so you should uh, you are supposed to continue listening to me. So uh, can you see just, yeah, let's go back to the presentation. Okay, we tried our best, sorry. So uh, then, uh, yeah. Here, so just uh, the graph in this slide show the behavior of four different stands as a result of the uh, expansion of the balloon. 
and you can see here clearly that we have a residual radial deformation so be careful that at the bottom we have the diameter yep so it shows to you the residual diameter of the stand after it it is being opened next slide and this slide shows these four different types of uh, balloons in the expanded state with the distribution of the von Mises stresses. And you can see here that surprisingly for such relatively tiny components, the level of stresses is very high. And we have found that for, for some of the designs being used, the safety factor is below than one. So theoretically, they should fail just at the mode, moment of expansion. And in reality, some doctors, and we have these discussions, they do have the situation when the stents are failing in the moment of their of the expansion and in this case they can sometimes put the second or even the third stand in order to achieve the aim of their surgical intervention next slide so these are the results of the simulation for the same stands but now from the point of view of the artery and the plaque and you can see here that the stands were, were removed. I mean, so just the results for the stands were removed from those of the simulations. And you can see here the level of the stresses and, and the pattern of their distribution inside the uh, plaque artery. Clearly, it somehow reflects the pattern of the geometry of the stands the levels of the stresses is significantly smaller here as you can imagine but please don't forget that generally the soft tissues they have the equivalent stiffnesses in kilopascals so they are significantly by many orders of magnitude significantly softer than metallics uh, that metallic uh, uh, materials and alloys next slide So uh, generally, this is the next step of introducing of additional levels of complexity into the models. The layers of the artery, they have distribution of fibers inside them, schematically shown at the bottom uh, image in the right-hand part. And this distribution of fibers it is have some pre, uh, predominate distribution for different layers. As a result, in total, we do have different type of anisotropic mechanical behavior, so that depending on the orientation, the property, uh, their properties can be different. So uh, the idea is, uh, so just of this presentation, is to consider different how the different models with different types of anisotropy result in the stress stretch behavior of the materials. And the dotted markers are the experimental uh, results obtained for longitudinal and circumferential orientations. Next slide. To describe this complex uh, type of behavior. I've mentioned the Ogden model. Now it is so just even a more advanced model. Holzapfer Gasser Ogden model, so which uses the following strain energy potential. And you can see here the respective parameters of the anisotropic model for these three layers intima, media, and adventitia. Next slide.
So the story of modeling is becoming even more intricate because we would like to reproduce the reality in the best possible way. And I've already mentioned not only the complex mechanical behavior, but in the real life, there is a complex interaction between the elements of the structure, the folded balloon, the stand and the walls. And clearly, all the type how the balloon is folded, the character of its contact with the stand and the stand with the plugs, it all makes the computation extremely complex and needs significant amount of time. So generally, some of the runs simulations, they need to use some uh, 30 days, a full month, on the high performance cluster for a single run when you are using a complex types of loading, for instance, the cyclic loading. But even this relatively so just simple cases when you have only the uh, extension of the balloon, it can take many hours of, of, of the high performance cluster work using the finite element simulations. By the way, all the simulations, they were performed with Abacus and with introduction of the subroutines in order to deal with the complex behavior and also some routines for post-processing. Next slide, please. So here is a straightforward analysis which demonstrate to you the effect of the anisotropy as compared to the isotropy. The reason behind this analysis was straightforward because in some numerical simulation, people still continue using relatively simple models of the, in, of, of the arterial walls. So, and you can see that as a result, they suggest there can be some differences in the performance here. Next slide. So these are now just two of the most recent and advanced stands presented here. And you can see the expanded geometry of the absorb stand and Zion's five stand. And you can see here the intricate features, and you can imagine that they should all be proper, properly meshed in order to get adequate results of the simulations. Next slide. So here now we, so I've already mentioned that uh, clearly materials being so stiff, uh, so metallic materials being so stiff, there is a, a, a desire to find materials with the properties closer to that of the biological tissue so that the mismatch between the properties would be smaller. And as I was presenting in the morning, uh, so just in the lecture, polymers are an obvious choice because they're significantly softer than, um, than metals. Here you see exactly uh, the case when on the one hand, we do have the stress strain cap for the cobalt chromium alloy. On the other hand, we have the PLLA, which I also just uh, discussed today in the morning. And you can see significant difference in their performance. Next slide. So uh, continuing, continuing so just discussion how to properly model the process of stenting. Even before you start expanding the stand, you should crimp it. Crimping, it means that you have the uh, stand produced, it can be, for, for instance, laser cut uh, from the tube, then you must radially compress it before it is being expanded. So, so some people clearly, the idea is simply to use it as it was from the so just already crimped geometry, but in this case, we are missing a significantly important stage which introduces a considerable amount of the residual stresses initiated by this procedure. Next slide. So, and you can see here the results of simulation of the process. 
at the beginning and then during uh, so just somewhere in the middle and the end of the process and so just I, I must highlight that as you can imagine that the contact problems are still a challenge in many simulation and they uh, they cause a need for significant computational power in order to be overcome next slide so here you have the results of the crimping of these two of these two uh, 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 stands and clearly you can see the level of the polymerase stresses is different but it's all clearly related to the structure and the properties of these materials and sorry so just the, the last one so just yeah not not to forget that so just that as far as we do have the irreversible deformation we also have a spring back which should also be considered in simulations and here you can see here so the results so just after the uh, fully crimped and when you remove the crimping device so just which was presented as a external tube we can have a partial spring back next slide so here are the results comparison between the uh, uh, so just for deployment and you now suggest so I custom to see the graphs on the left hand side we apply the pressure so then we are expanding them and then we are removing the pressure and we do have the residual diameter this is exactly the opening in the lumen inside the artery next slide so once more and uh, you can see here the extremely high level of the von Mises stresses, as I already mentioned, which are pretty close to the load bearing capacity of the material. Next slide. So just once more now, you also seen this type of the, uh, of the results. So these are the post-processing of results uh, when the stents are being done invisible. And you can see here the distribution of the stresses for two considered stands. So, and from the top to the bottom in a plaque, in an intima layer, in the media layer, in the adventitia layer after deployment of these stands. Next slide. So, so just, yeah, I've already discussed with you the problem of restenosis. So once more, uh, uh, so just please look at the bottom right image. You can see there, uh, so just uh, this is uh, so just a presentation of the analysis uh, where you can see the black points. This is a position of the stand. So just clearly it's, it's, the tra it's transversal cross section. While the uh, intima, area which is extremely thin in the normal artery which is becoming as a result of this type of the loading it grows significantly and generally it occupies so you see that it grows through the stand and it significantly reduces the lumen so the area in white and with denoted with the letter l there so that's why restenosis so it is the development which everybody would try to avoid because we removed the plaque, but now the so-called near intimal growth, it is so just closing back the lumen once more. Next slide. So, uh, so we've shown to you some of the uh, of the so just uh, of the models bef uh, before. Here is once more. So just you can look at the equation for the first order organ hyperelastic model we also need to consider the Mullins effect so clearly we will go quickly because there is a lot of time already taken next slide and there is also uh, so just uh, uh, we are speaking here about the damage model which is uh, 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 so just stress softening as a result of this damage initiation. So this was incorporated in terms of the Mullins effect for the plaque. And here are the results 
and you can see the comparison of this study with the experimental data obtained for the plaque in the graph. Next slide. So that uh, in order to describe the damage in the uh, model of the arterial layer, the Holzapfel Gasser Ogden model, this is just also Svarian HGOC as it is known, was modified. And you can see here so just a complex type of the potential. Next slide. So, so just I, I, I leave this so just there is a reference and you can look there. So just uh, but it's simply to demonstrate the complexity of the description which are being used uh, for modeling of the arterial layers. Next slide. So these are the uh, respective parameters which for, for the model which were shown before. And there is a comparison of the uh, just uh, of the current model with with the data, and you can see pretty good uh, correlation for two major di direction: circumferential and longitudinal ones. Next slide. So uh, we discussed with you the restenosis and the restenosis. So if plaque was there and we could model it so just straightforwardly with its properties, for restenosis, we need to use the growth model, evolution with time. And so this such as the theory behind it is presented, is presented here. And you can see the closed form expression at the bottom. Please continue. Next slide. And so just so once more verification of the growth stretch with time. Now the time is so just is up to half a year. Next slide. And now so just apparently we have all the elements finally together. And these and here are some of the results of the simulations presented. I'm aware that we need to finish, so that's why I'm going rather quickly through the through the slides. Next slide, please. Yep, you can see here the distribution of the parameters inside uh, inside the stented area. You can see the multiple uh, multiple dots, the clouds of dots in the left hand side, which are related to different positions. At different parts along the lens of the stand, you have then such as their presentation, and here you can see the uh, suggest that the evolution of the lumen at different stages. And so the first, the upper uh, graph is related to the deployment of the of the stand, inflation, deflation, and then suggest, and you can see that there are small steps, but at the bottom you can see. A, so just a half a year, half a year of uh, of the growth of the layers, such so of the uh, of the intima layer inside uh, inside the artery, which is uh, uh, which is causing the closing down of the lumen. So you can see that so just the lumen side it is suggest so it is below the cap. So do continue. Yep, so here are predictions of the restenosis clearly because we do have mechanical stimulation. It is not uniform in the material and it is related to the distribution to, of the stresses. And uh, so you can see here that uh, so just uh, the relationship between the stretch uh, and, uh, and the, uh, the stretch and the growth and time. Next slide. So, and very quickly, so just all what we have presented, notwithstanding the complexity of, of I have discussed about, it was still a relatively simple cylindrical geometry, as you've seen. Now we are moving so just to the domain when we do have specific situation which are obtained by the doctors. And on the top, 
you can see here the artery. So just in the right hand side, it is how the artery is changing along its length. And you can see that there are some narrow parts, some broad parts, and clearly the models, if you would like to have a successful operation and to advise the medics about what should be done, we need to incorporate the unevenness of these and all the local conditions as much as close to reality as it is. So, and this is the idea behind this patient-specific modeling. Next slide. So we've discussed, and in our case, the plaque was coaxial. In reality, it is anything but. So that's why we need also to consider the asymmetric distribution of the plaque with different thickness along the circumferential direction. Next. So let's go just once more. Next slide. Okay, so just, sorry, so just I didn't know, because it's not my presentation, but generally we are on our conclusions. And so just, you can read, and while you are reading the conclusions, so the point what suggest, uh, what uh, we wanted to, uh, suggest to make with this presentation is that even a relatively simple and routine nowadays surgical interventions inside the body, they represent not only the challenge for the patients and for the doctors, but in terms of the modeling and mechanical responses. We need to develop new types of models for the materials. We also need to consider that we do have the parameters of the growth of the tissues, which are generally against the idea of the thermodynamical foundations of continuum mechanics, where we do have the continuity of a material. Here we do have a growth of it. So not to forget that the problem of parameter identification for all the biological tissues and materials like a plaque in their real conditions, it's a very challenging one. So animal models can be used. We can't use directly patients because of the ethical conditions. And if we are using them outside of the body, then clearly they're already not in the same state as they are inside. And not to forget that clearly each part of our body, as I've mentioned, has its own intrinsic geometry. Its wall thickness are changing for artery, even for the same artery, as you say, in same inside the same patient, but you can imagine the diversity of them in different patients with different characteristics like weight and height and nutrition and even race and gender. So there is a huge challenge on the way to developing really personalized medical solutions. And so just finishing the presentation, I've started in the morning, I'm finishing now, and I'm inviting everybody so just this is a very interesting challenge and very gratifying field because the, so just the solutions obtained here can improve the life of millions of people who are suffering with different devices. So, but mechanically, it's a huge challenge, but it is very interesting. And so everybody is welcome. Thank you very much. And I'll try so you can ask questions. So just by, uh, by using the chat or so just uh, you can ask them so just uh, orally and I will try to answer them. Thank you very much.